So hello my friends, Devon Lennox here, Photography P. Com. In today's video, I want to talk about teleconverters. Note you can find timestamps in the description down below. You can also scrub through the video to skip to a more relevant section if you'd like. Also of note, the accompanying blog post for this video, linked down below, has several helpful visuals to explain these concepts. So check it out if you'd like some more specific examples. But with that said, let's get started. Closing the distance between you and your subject is often a challenge in photography. And even with the highest end telephoto lenses, you can only get so close, but sometimes that's still just too far away and physically moving in closer is dangerous or too impractical. Thankfully, in comes the teleconverter to help close the distance and give you more reach to your lens than normal. But while teleconverters solve this common photographic problem and do so with several other benefits, they're not a flawless solution. And in practice, they have several disadvantages that can negatively affect your image quality. So in this video, let's talk about their strengths and weaknesses so you'll understand whether they're even worth considering. But first and foremost, what is a teleconverter? A teleconverter, sometimes called an extender or a multiplier, is a type of lens adapter that attaches between the camera body and a compatible host lens. And its purpose is to multiply or extend the apparent focal length of your lens, providing it with more reach. You can look at teleconverters like you're adding a magnifying lens to your camera, so they basically stretch the entire image circle of the lens, so now only a smaller portion of it fills the sensor, and that in turn creates a magnifying or zooming effect when it's actually cropped by your sensor, which pulls you closer to the subject. Now, there are several types of these adapters available, but each type is specified by the multiplication factor it adds to the host lens, which ranges from 1.4 times to two times. So these adapters increase the lens's effective focal length by either 1.4, 1.7, or two times, depending on the teleconverter that you choose. So for example, connecting a two times teleconverter like Nikon's TC20E will multiply the focal length of your lens two times. So using this adapter with Nikon's 200 millimeter F2.8 lens will convert that same lens into a 400 millimeter F5.6 equivalent while using Nikon's TC14E, their 1.4 times adapter will turn it into a 280 millimeter lens instead. I wanna make an important note here, and that is you must multiply both the focal length and the aperture setting by the teleconverter's level of magnification to get the true equivalent. And this applies to both prime and zoom lenses. You also need to consider your camera's crop factor if you're using an APS-C or smaller sensor camera, as the crop factor also becomes part of this calculation. Without doing both of these, you're not gonna get the right magnification and equivalent focal length, and that could become a deal breaker if you purchase the wrong teleconverter. But quick commercial break. Did you know Photography PX launched a sister company called PXPresets.com? Well, if you didn't, PXPresets.com is going to be your next one-stop shop for Adobe Lightroom desktop and mobile presets. On PX Presets, you can find a large selection of presets to shortcut the process of getting high quality images and consistent branding across your imagery. We have a large selection of styles that are well-suited for food, products, portraiture, fashion, beauty, and much more. We're also running a special right now for our mega collection. So if you want to upgrade your entire workflow in one fell swoop, now's a great opportunity. So if you're in the market for some high quality Lightroom presets to shortcut your workflow, feel free to check out pxpresets.com. With that said, back to the video. Now, from a design perspective, a teleconverter is a small lens adapter with several internal elements, similar to what you'd find in a typical lens, but on a much smaller scale. However, they usually have minimal elements geared to reducing optical defects like distortion and chromatic aberrations. Instead, their lens elements are here to intercept the light before the light converges at the nodal point and instead rebend it to focus behind the unit. Doing so extends the focal length since the light has to travel further to come into focus and it also narrows the angle of view, producing a tighter crop. So why use a teleconverter? The main reason to use a teleconverter is to close the distance between you and your subject. Merely adding this adapter adds 40% or more reach to your lens, giving you even more range than before. And that extra bit of reach often solves the problem of getting close enough in most situations. 
But it's also important I note here that these adapters generally don't work with wide angle or standard lenses. And it's also essential to note that most of today's lenses have sophisticated optical designs and sometimes protruding rear lens elements. So not all telephoto lenses from every manufacturer are compatible with every teleconverter. Instead, you'll be sad to know the list of compatible lenses is usually relatively short and only includes a handful of the manufacturer's most recent lenses. So it's wise to check the compatibility beforehand. Now, you may be curious in asking, how does a teleconverter compare to cropping? Since many of today's full frame cameras offer an APS-C crop mode, be it 1.5 or 1.6 times crops. But if you wanna know the short answer, it's no. It's not a better option than using a dedicated teleconverter. The reason is that in-camera cropping merely crops the photo by recording a smaller sensor area, giving it the appearance of a tighter angle of view. But in reality, it's only changing the field of view. While that's great, it doesn't physically change anything about the lens's focal length. And the focal length here is what actually determines the lens true angle of view and its other optical traits like compression and magnification. A dedicated teleconverter physically alters the camera's effective focal length and that in turn generally reduces the angle of view and increases the lens compression. So the result is a photo that looks identical to those taken with a real lens of that focal length, not one with a slightly tighter crop. Cropping also exaggerates noise and other image defects, which isn't the case with teleconverters historically. That said, what are the benefits and advantages of using a teleconverter? Number one, focal length. The sole purpose of this accessory is to extend the focal length of its host, so it makes sense that this would be a key advantage as they help you close the distance to your subject. Number two, they're affordable. A teleconverter is a substantially cheaper alternative to a super telephoto lens. We're talking a cost savings of upwards of 80%. And these kinds of cost savings are the exact reasons they exist to begin with. So you can have access to similar focal lengths without picking up a second mortgage in the process. Number three, a weight. A teleconverter is also much lighter than a super telephoto lens. Take for example, Canon's 400 millimeter F 2.8 L, which weighs 6.25 pounds, making it almost twice as heavy as their 7200 F 2.8 L with their two times extender. And you'll feel this difference between these kind of weights, especially if you're out shooting wildlife and backpacking for extended periods. Next is gonna be the minimum focusing distance. Since teleconverters don't affect a lens's optical characteristics and instead only magnify the central portion of the frame, you maintain your lens's minimum focusing distance. So unlike a 400 millimeter lens with a focusing distance of 30 meters, you can keep the one meter focusing distance of a 200 millimeter lens, but still have the same reach. That said, teleconverters, while helpful, are not perfect by any means. So let's cover their key disadvantages now. First and foremost is gonna be image quality. Aside from the lens compatibility issues I mentioned before, it's essential to highlight that teleconverters also decrease overall image quality. Specifically, they impact peripheral sharpness, contrast, and magnify lens defects like distortion and chromatic aberration. And the reductions in image quality are especially noticeable when you use a 1.7 or two times teleconverter, where you can experience up to 60% loss in sharpness. And the effects are even worse if you stack teleconverters. Thankfully, the lens aberrations occur mainly on the edges of the frame, so you can remove some of these in post-processing, plus the loss of sharpness and contrast is marginal at 30% for most 1.4 times teleconverters, so you can recover that detail fairly easily by adding sharpening and post-processing, but it's still something to keep in mind. Next is gonna be aperture. Attaching a teleconverter immediately removes your widest aperture since it increases the distance light travels to the sensor, which reduces the total amount of light hitting it. So merely adding a 1.4 times teleconverter removes one stop on your aperture and a two times teleconverter removes two stops. That change converts a standard 200 millimeter f 2.8 lens into a 280 millimeter f 4 or 400 millimeter f 5.6 lens. So low light photography with these accessories is definitely going to be a problem. Next, autofocus. The loss of incoming light also negatively affects your camera's autofocusing ability since it has less light to use. And unfortunately, all cameras use their lenses widest aperture to find focus. So with you losing part of your widest aperture setting, you'll likely run into some issues autofocusing as well. Sadly, many older cameras don't support autofocus at apertures lower than f8, forcing you to resort to manual focus. Thankfully, if you have a newer generation mirrorless camera, this shouldn't be that big of a deal breaker as many support autofocusing at negative 4 EV. So to conclude this video, should you use a teleconverter? 
Well, yes, cell converters are quite the useful accessories and a hot commodity these days, given the fact that they've been back ordered now for several months. So they're clearly in demand and that demand does make sense. The cost savings and focal length advantages of this accessory make them the ideal and critical tool amongst sports and wildlife photographers. But you must understand that these advantages do come at the risk of poor image quality. And it's also important to reiterate that these adapters are only compatible with some lenses, not all of them. So you're gonna want to research this very carefully. Nevertheless, teleconverters help you get closer to the action without breaking the bank in the process. And while they're not the holy grail in this particular medium, they're a solid investment nonetheless. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found the content of it valuable, insightful, and you learned something meaningful here. If you're new to our channel, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. If you have any comments, questions, or feel like I've overlooked something in the course of the video, please let me know down below. I've been your host, Devon Lennox, photography, P. Dot com.